प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समीप रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समीप रहो अमारी ए ह घनश्याम महाराज नि जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नि जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नि जय सुप्रीम ओ माइटी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Pujavad dear Guruji, Jai Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Bhagwan Swami Narayan Sadhu, in his era 200 years ago, had to suffer many, many hardships. And due to those hardships, we are able to enjoy the fruits here today. What do I mean? Well, the fruits of staying at these lavish temples, the fruits of having AC and heating during the warm and cold seasons, the fruits of other devotees providing grains so one can make food for Maharaj. The fruits of everything, every, everything and anything because of their hardships we have received something which is beyond value. Something that is not could not be possible without them first taking the first hit. But what kind of hardships? How did they suffer? And what kind of faith did these sadhus keep in Bhagwan? That's what we want to take a look at. Because no matter what, no matter how much hardships we're going through right now, the example charitra that I want to share with you today has no comparison to what we're going through right now. Because in that time, it was very, very difficult for sadhus to live as a Swaminarayan saint and get by. Nevertheless, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's tests, his examinations were also difficult. For that reason, Sadhus had to go through many, many different obstacles and circumstances. Let's take a look at what kind of faith they kept in Maharaj and what kind of hardship they went through. Swami Narayan Hare. In Gajada, Sriji Maharaj announced the beginning of a new vow for his sadhus to follow. Now, Bhagwan Swami Narayan in that time liked to test his sadhus. There are many different kinds of tests. For example, Bhagwan would send his sadhus to such areas where one could not see each other. That's how they had to live from a distance. There was this one other vow that he gave where Sadhu only had to stay in his coping or his undergarment and had to wear no other garments in the cold season. There was other vows where sadhus only had to eat what was given to them in their hands. Such different kinds of vows or prakrams that they were called or such kind of disciplines sadhus had to endeavor and due to these disciplines, Bhagavan Swaminarayan kind of filtered his sadhus out from the strong and the weak. Now Bhagwan had announced the beginning of a new vow, and he had done this for a total of 116 times, different, different vows. And 
right now, if we practically take a look, only those sadhus in that time could go through this kind of, not torment, but this kind of examination and pass in the eyes of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Fearing that he, w fearing he would not be able to follow the vogue, a paramahansa, meaning a sadhu named Haridas, left satsang to live as a solitary sadhu. Meaning, there were many sadhus in that time, over 2,000, but there was this one sadhu who feared he could not challenge or take this vow on. Due to that, he decided that he wants to separate from the group and live as a solitary sadhu of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Meaning, he did not give his faith up, but he had to give up following this vow because it was beyond his capacity. However, his faith in Sriji Maharaj was firm in his soul. Though he had left satsang, he followed the rules of celibacy, spent his time in devotion, and traveled the villages and towns to explain Maharaj's greatness, meaning he was a true sadhu overall. But due to one small, you can say, rule, he could not follow. He had to leave himself, or he decided to leave himself from the group. One night, he entered a village at about 10 o'clock. He mm. went to sleep at the Ramji Mandir of the village. Other Bhavas were staying at that Ramji Mandir as well. Seeing Haridas's orange clothes, they asked, Hey, whose sadhu are you? Haridas replied, Swami Narin Bhagwan sadhu. As soon as they heard Swami Narin, the Bhavas, meaning these fake false sadhus, such kind of sadhus who had no constraint with rules and regulations of becoming a sadhu, such kind of sadhu who did not want to follow any of the rules but wanted to depict themselves as a true sadhu, such kind of sadhu who tortured other sadhus, true sadhus, and nonetheless such where they violated the rules of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and overall greed, lust, anger, all these kinds of vices were engrossed in them. Such kind of bhavas, meaning bhavas are fake false sadhus. They said, after hearing that Swami Narayan word just once, they said to Haridas, give up the name Swami Narayan or we'll burn you alive. Such kind of threats were given to Swaminarayan Bhagwan sadhus at that time. I mean, putting yourself into such a hypothetical situation, how would we react? What would we do? Would we give up Bhagwan's name for our life? Is that even possible? I mean, we might think in our head, I just, I just will explain to this sadhu that I will not say Swaminarayan and get away. But... The sadhus in that time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan were very firm. They were very strong. They were very, very head forward and they were stable in what they believed in. Due to that, Haridas said every breath was filled with the name of Swaminarayan. He ignored the bhavas and sat in a corner chanting Maharaj's name, Swaminarayan, 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 Swaminarayan. Seeing this, one of the bhavas w was angered even more. He yelled out again, Hey, give up his name or I'll burn you this instant. And with that, he went to the fire nearby and pulled out scalding hot tongs. Haridas was still chanting Maharaj's name. The bhavas began burning and beating Haridas with red hot tongs. Could you imagine that situation at that time? That's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan has given us the vit of the Vachanamru. We may not have to go or encounter such kind of situations in our life, but we may have some kind of financial problem, some kind of social problem, some kind of situation in our life currently here, according to this age, according to this time, that is maybe unbearable for us. 
Well, what does Bhagwan Swaminarayan give in his vachan that we can take and accept into our life? That's the question. According to the Vachnamrut Gadadam, middle chapter 62nd, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states, when a devotee of God experiences hardships of any kind, it should be known that the source of those miseries is not kal, meaning time, karma, meaning action, or maya, meaning illusion. In actual fact, it is God Himself who inspires hardships to befall upon His devotees in order to test their patience. Meaning Bhagwan Himself is testing us for our patience. How much patience do we still have in God? How much do we still have faith in Him? Then, just as a man hides behind a curtain and watches, God hides in the heart of His devotee and from there He observes the devotee's patience. Besides, who are Kal, Karma, and Maya that they could harm a devotee of God? So realizing it to be God's wish, a devotee of God should remain cheerful. Meaning, Bhagwan is saying in this situation, if you encounter such kind of hardship, you should number one, understand it to be Bhagwan's examination. Number two, keep patience. And number three, do not believe Kal, Karma, or Maya to be the doers, but believe Bhagwan, Bhagwan Swamiyan to be the doer of such kind of, or such kind of hardships that you're encountering. If one can pass these three kind, these three understandings, and imbibe it and instill it in one's heart, then Bhagwan himself would become happy, because this is true understanding. Nonetheless, Bhagwan states one should remain cheerful. Now, think about it. If we give a hypothetical situation here right now, suppose that uh, we are a doctor by occupation and somehow we lose our job and we lose our all our money and we lose our house and we have to live in such a small apartment with no other luxuries, all due to some kind of income tax problem, the IRS, or some kind of situation like that. Then. Can we still stay cheerful as we did when we were living in a mansion or a big house as we had all those luxuries, those cars, everything and anything we wanted? Can it still remain? That's the question at hand. If it can, then yes, we are a true devotee of God. If it cannot, then we still need to learn and develop more understanding in our life. Anyways, getting back to the story. As the pain increased, Haridas's chanting grew louder, and the beat and the beatings those bawas gave him gave him increased as well. The bawas beat Haridas until they were tired. Then, seeing his bloody and unconscious body, they took him for dead and went away. This is how badly badly these sadhus were beaten in that time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Yet. They never blamed Bhagwan. Yet, they never blamed sadhus or devotees. They never put any kind of negativity on any of these elements. In our situation, if we pray to a sadhu, oh, that please, I, I want to get into this school or I want to get uh, these kind of scores or I want to get this kind of job, and if it does not occur, then what what do we do? We stop having faith. We lose faith in in Maharaj, Sadhu, Hari Bhakto, and due to that, what do we gain? Nothing. But if we kept faith, even if we didn't get our way, that's the true characteristic of a Sadhu, of a, of a Hari Bhagat. In a few days, Haridas returned to Gadara. A Sabha was going on. Haridas went and fell at Maharaj's feet. Either remove my faith in you or accept me back into satsang. This is what Haridas pleaded. Remove my faith or accept me back. This kind of proposal was given to Bhagwan Swami Narayan in that time. Now, what kind of a god can refuse such a proposal? Nonetheless, in Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Vachanam Gadada, last chapter 13, Bhagwan himself states, It is that very God who is the sole controller of the body. If he wishes, 
he may oblige the body with an honorable ride on an elephant, or if he wishes, he may have it thrown into prison, or if he wishes, he may have it even place some, place some serious illness into the body. Despite this, one should never pray before God in the following manner. Maharaj, please relieve me of my misery. Why? Because... We want this body to behave in accordance with the wishes of God. After all, God's wishes is our wish. We do not want our preference to differ from the preferences of God, even in the slightest way. Moreover, since we have offered our body, mind, and wealth to God, then now only the will of God is our pradabd, meaning destiny. Besides that, there is no other pradabd us. Therefore, regar regardless of whatever pain or pleasure we may encounter by the wish of God, we should not become disturbed in any way. We should be pleased with whatever Maharaj, whatever Maharaj is pleased with. These are the words of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Without a doubt, Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants to perfect each and every element in his devotee to the maximum. So that even if they encounter the most hardest adverse circumstance, they would be bulletproof, as we call it in this term. So this offer was made to Maharaj. Maharaj asked Haridas what had happened and he, he told Maharaj everything. Hearing this tale, Maharaj's eyes filled with emotion. Holding him by his arms, Maharaj raised Haridas and Haridas's upper cloth slid off. The whole assembly saw Haridas, Haridas's blooded back and torso. In some places, pieces of flesh had been torn out. Compassionate, Sri Hari sat Haridas next to him. He gently moved his hand over Haridas's body, blessing him. Have Haridas's bed made next time next to mine in Akshara Ordi. I myself will serve him. These wounds are not are not on Haridas's body. They are on my body. Even though his life was at stake, this sadhu did not abandon my name. Now we shall not abandon him. Bhagwan's compassionate nature. Bhagwan Swamiran says that since he has not abandoned me, meaning my faith in me, abandon my name, I shall not abandon him. And he accepted him back in. Such were Maharaj's paramanses, meaning sadhus. Their faith was bound to their soul. They would die, but they would not give up their faith. This is called attachment to God. If we have such kind of attachment to God and His saint, then we can be said to have true satsang. Now, attachment to God like this is very difficult. But, to give you a secret, to show you a secret. Don't worry if we cannot be attached to God in this manner, but we have his Ekantik Satpurush in the form of our Puja Guruji, who we definitely can become attached to. And that's why he has come all the way from Akshardham here on this earth. So if we become attached to him, if we admire his qualities as a sadhu, if we accept him to be a very great sadhu, kese asanta to bahu sarare, khara kalyana na kar narare, ita loja guna koi gresere, te to brahma mole vasale sere, even if we accept him to be a very good sadhu, by that very factor, we can also attain akshadam. That's why the very factor of developing affection for Bhagwan is to first develop affection for the Ekantik Satpurush in the form of our Puja Guruji, who we have received. Then only, then only will attachment for Bhagwan arise in our life. Saying this, we should understand to make the right choice in life. Saying this, my humble, Jai Swaminar.
वर्णिवेशमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज जय सुप्रीम ऑलमाइट योर बिलउड गणश्याम महाराज पात में कटोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पात गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू ड्यूटी जय स्वामी नारायण टुडे इज अ डे ऑफ रक्षाबंधन इट इज ऑल्सो द डे ऑफ श्रावण सुद पूनम एंड ऑन दिस डे अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर ट्रेडिशन अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर स्क्रिप्चर कमेंट्स फॉर ऑल द हिंदूज दर इज अ ट्रेडिशन टू टाई वी कैन से लाइक रिस्ट मैन एंड टू वंस राइट हैंड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वन बीज फॉर वन सेफ्टी नॉट ओनली फॉर दिस वर्ल्ड बट एज अ सत्संगी ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण वी शूड ऑल्सो प्रे फॉर our betterment or our protection from our inner enemies like lust anger avarice jealousy etc etc and also we should pray to maharaj for progress in the satsang by that we can understand more and more about bhagwan's divine form as well as about the satpurush true form in this way we can progress in understanding maharaj and ekandik satpurush so on this day everyone desire and everyone wish to tie a rakhri on one's right hand and after that one pray to bhagwan for one's protection uh protection from different different things but as a duty of a duty of bhagwan swami and we have to tie a rakhri on our right hand uh, only because bhagwan grant us the uh, our safety or we can say as bhagwan swami himself had asked boons from his guru at the time of he becoming a uh, head of uh, the religious head of the sampraday at the time he had asked for us for our protection for our safety and not only that but even sadguru niskaran sir write down many many parichas in the bhakta chindamani and when we studied those parichas those incidents then by that we can understand that bhagwan always remain with his santo devotees even female devotees even child devotees and because of that bhagwan protect every time each and every devotee is from all kinds of dangers so in this way bhagwan is ever ready for us to protect us from all kinds of dangers or all kinds of problems and difficulties so now for what we have to pray to bhagwan for our protection and what kind of rakhri we should tie to our right hand for that it is said in the vachanamrit Bhagwan Swami himself says in the 72 72 verse number of Gada first chapter Maharaj said in the verse number that for one who has firm faith or unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan and his ekantik sant then not the kal meaning time or karma meaning once uh deed once performed deed as well as maya meaning illusion cannot affect that duty by any means meaning he remain free from the effect of these three elements and one who has not unflinching faith in the form of bhagwan as well as ekantik sant that person can never be protected by any kind of difficulties even bhagwan himself wish to protect him but bhagwan cannot protect that person in this way according to bhagwan's divine words we should imbibe this virtues of unflinching faith in our life and by that we can remain safe throughout our life in this satsang so this is what today's day of rakshabandhan and also i remember one story regarding this raksabandhan because 
Many years ago, this incident happened here in US. There was a day of Raksha Bandhan at the time which Guruji was here in 2015 and the Loyadam Parivar devotees they have organized a picnic for Puja Guruji's presence and uh, in the picnic after uh, playing many different satsang games and the other different satsang activities after that after getting Puja Guruji's blessings they all prayed to Puja Guruji uh, for tying Rakri on their right hand so Puja Guruji one after one devotees tied a Rakri so that their Dharma, Bhakti, Jnana and Vairagya be protected from the any kind of Kusang. So in this way Puja Guruji was tying uh, Rakri on each devotee's right hand at that time. The other devotees, those who were not living in New Jersey, meaning those who were living in different states of U United States, the, so those devotees they also desired to have uh, Puja Guruji's Rakri. So the devotees, they specially called to the Mandir and they uh, requested for the Rakri. So the Santo and devotees they sent some Rakri after making sanctified by Maharaj and Puja Guruji. And one devotee who was living in Houston, Texas, that Bhagat's name was Jagdish Bhai. And he was living there, and he was, uh, he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami, but not too much uh, attached to Lohadam Parivar. But uh, so because of his relative, they were devote, they were Lohadam Parivar devotees, and that's why, because of that relation, they uh, Jagdish Bhai received a message that. Uh, we have a live katha every day, so he also started to listen daily katha, and because of that, he also requested for the rakhri, sanctified by our pure dragon Maharajas and Puja Guruji. So after when he received the rakhri, he tied on his right hand. But at the time, he was suffering a lot. He had a uh, like some kind of pain inside his stomach, and even after diagnosis all kinds of diagnosis no no doctor can make any kind of decision that this kind of disease happen in, in stomach or this kind of uh, problem inside the stomach no one can guess so after uh, seeing many doctors meaning after meeting with many doctors no one can uh, actually diagnose that what's the problem inside so the doctors one after one making reports and like tasting blurs and one after one things but no one can get any like solutions what kind of medicine if given to Jagdish Bhai then it can be relieved his, his pain but no one can found the medicine so he was like suffering from pain sometimes that pain was unbearable so in this way, he passed his days after days, meaning he was suffering from this disease uh, last two, three years. And even though after consulting many doctors, he cannot get any kind of relief from his pain. So after that, uh, he and his family members, they decided to pray to Bhagwan Swaminar as well as to our Puja Guruji's photo. They never made even for a single time to our Puja Guruji. And because of that, they have only one small photos in a Lohadam Parivar calendar, yearly calendar. So they pray to that photo that we do not meet you ever, but we pray to you that if you are a true saint of Bhagwan Swamina, please do something so that I can relieve from this unbearable pain. And for that, I only because of that reason I tied this rakri on your on my right hand. So please protect me from this unbearable pain. As Jagdish Bhai and his family members they pray in front of Puja Guruji's photo and calendar and pray in this way. So what happened after one week? They have the appointment with a very famous 
a doctor and they went there the doctor tasted then the doctor even surprised that how is this possible it is unbearable pain and now it's nothing and not only that but when we check with the different tastes inside your stomach then that will be something disturbed inside something problematic inside and now it's nothing without any medication how is it how is this possible then Jagdish by himself narrated his story to that doctor that uh, it is only because of my prayer and this it is only because of uh, my Guruji even I never met him still only because of my prayer and only by tying this rakri given by him it's happened this miracle so in this way if we pray to Bhagwan as well as if we pray to Bhagwan Sekantik Sant like Puja Guruji then our prayer always be answered and we will be relieved from not only physical pain but also if we have any kind of like um, our spiritual pain meaning uh, on the path of spiritual if we have any difficulties if we have any kind of problems to like uh, doing meditation or doing or following any rules and regulations on the path of God or even understanding any words from the scriptures if we pray to Bhagwan or if we consult our physician or doctor Puja Guruji then we will be relieved from all kinds of problems and we will uh, get a reliable solution so this is what today's day of Raksabandhan now uh, there is one incident happened many meaning at the time of Bhagwan Swaminar we will go through that incident There is lots of female devotees at the time of Bhagwan Swaminar and according to the scriptures there were all female devotees as well as male devotees or even child devotees they all have that much spiritual like status or we can say the higher attainment they have attained through the unflinching faith they have for the form of Bhagwan Swaminar and by associating with the saints and listening there is discourses they have attained on such a higher position that they have not uh, for that uh, for those devotees they have nothing this world or worldly pain or pleasure and whenever they pray to Bhagwan, Bhagwan also give them darshan according to their wishes so let me see one female devotee of Bhagwan Swaminar we know our our organization is known as Loyadam Parivar. So this is the story of the Loyadam India. So at the time of Bhagwan Swami, and we know the main duty of Loya that was Surakhachar. Surakhachar and his wife Santaba. So Surakhachar's family was the duty of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, but there were many other devotees in living in Loya, but not from the beginning. So from the beginning, not Surakhachar, but his wife Santaba, she was preaching satsang rules and regulations, describing glories and greatness of Maharaj, as well as describing the glories of satsang and santo and the other devotees to other females in the village and by the association of Santaba the other female of the Loya they also one after one gradually joined satsang and gradually they also all the females they also preach the satsang's perspective to their husbands and the other members of the family so by listening such words such discourses uh, the other villagers also become a duty of Bhagavan Swami Narayan. But still some persons they were like non-believers meaning they did not believe in God because why? Because they did not like the satsang's rules and regulations. And such person was Sangha Patel. He was not become a devotee of Bhagavan Swami Narayan at the time his wife Hetba 
she was become a devotee of Bhagwan Swaran because of Santaba's association. And after listening Santaba's uh, like glory of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and Santo and like rules and regulations regarding our satsang, in this way, when she listened from Santaba's, she also decided to become a satsangi. And finally, she also followed each and every rules and regulations prescribed for female duties by Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And that point, Sangha Patel did not like, meaning Sangha Patel did not like that his wife, Hetba, was following Bhagwan Swaminarayan's rules and regulations. So, he was torturing day and night to his wife, Sand uh, to his wife Hetba. But Hetba, as she listened from Santaba, that we have our Santos rules that they have to suffer each and every kind of pain or uh, tolerance and meaning all kinds of pressure or torture or pain or misery one have to suffer from that <clears throat> and one have to tolerate. So because of Santaba's association and Santaba's uh, like talking and uh, talking such kind of talks every day, Hitba also uh, develop that kind of uh, capacity to tolerate Sangha Patel's torture and because of that she cannot even speak a single word for Sangha Patel. Not only that but Hitba each and every day pray to Maharaj that Maharaj please do something so that my husband Sangha Patel become your devotee. She has not even single time pray to Bhagwan for relieving her from the pain or torture given by Sangha Patel. But instead she was praying to Maharaj for making Sangha Patel a devotee. Once Hedba explained everything to Santaba and Santaba also uh, suggested her that we should pray to Maharaj. Maharaj will do something. We cannot do anything. And Maharaj is the all doer. He'll do one day. He has uh, many, many kinds of remedy. He has many, many kinds of solutions to our problems. So instead of doing anything by ourselves, let me pray to Maharaj. Maharaj will help us. So in this way, Santaba also joined in prayer to Maharaj. And Hedba every day pray to Maharaj, Maharaj, please, oh merciful Lord, either inspire my husband into satsang or redeem me from his abominable uh, companionship. Take me away to Garda or better still, let me die and enter to your divine Aksardham. So, in this way, one day, Hetba was praying to Bhagwan Swaminarayan and after, uh, at that time she was making food, she was cooking food for her husband and the other workers. At the time Sangha Patel was not in a house and he was in a field. So at the time of lunch Hetba had to take all this food and she had to go to the field for giving this food to her husband and the other workers. So, uh, say Hedba was cooking the food for her husband and the other workers. At the time, she was uh, also praying to Bhagwan that please Maharaj do something. Now it's enough and I cannot tolerate anymore. So please help me. So, as she was praying to Maharaj and she cooked the food, so after cooking the food, as she, she was carrying lunch to the field for her husband and the workers, at the time, <coughs> to her amazement, she was, uh, Sri, uh, she saw that Sri Hari, meaning Bhagwan Swaminarayan, was coming with santos and devotees towards a uh, village lawyer. So, First, she cannot believe that Maharaj himself was coming towards her. So, but finally, 
she stopped there and she bowed down to maharaj maharaj was approach uh, maharaj was coming on manki and at the time maharaj himself stopped where he was standing in waiting of maharaj so maharaj also gave her darshan and not only that but maharaj himself asked her hedba i want to eat something i am very hungry so please give me some food so hedba requested maharaj please first come to my home sit there for quite some time i will prepare meal for you so in this way hedba and maharaj and all the santos and devotees they all went there towards hedba's house and maharaj instructed all the santos to go to surakachar's home and the, some devotees they also joined maharaj towards hedba's home then at the house hedba uh, hedba had prepared one uh, nice wooden couch and he had and on the wooden couch there was uh, there were like cylindric pillows and uh, everything is nice and everything for maharaj everything was new so maharaj sat on that wooden couch and after that hetba requested maharaj maharaj please stay here for some time i'll cook new food for you then maharaj asked her then what is this basket then she was explain to maharaj mara this is food for my husband and uh, the other workers they were in the field so maharaj asked her if you you would be not there within short period of time then your husband sanga patel might be hungry upon you so do one thing you prepare food for me and meanwhile i am going there to give this food to them and so by saying this maharaj himself without asking anyone maharaj himself took that basket of food and put upon his head and he walked towards the farm of sanga patel so the other devotees they also follow maharaj but maharaj denied maharaj said i do not want you all to come with me you stay here i will be back after some time after giving this food to sanga patel and in this way maharaj himself walked towards the sanga patel's farm and that was summer days and that was very hot days so maharaj was sweating all his body and still maharaj was walking towards sanga patel's farm finally when maharaj reached near the farm so at that time sanga patel was also become very hungry because it was already late so sanga patel was hungry and he was walking here and there he was watching towards the way that why his wife hetba not coming with the food so in this way he was become very angry in his mind and he was walking here and there and after some time when he looked towards the way he found a person who was coming with the food with a basket of food so he was thinking who might be he like why my wife not coming with the food and this person coming with the food so finally when maharaj came near to him then he found that this is uh maybe bhagwan swami narayan hit by bhagwan so in this way when he did the darshan of maharaj by very close then at the time his anger automatically removed from his mind and he asked who are you and why why are you coming here with the food then maharaj before giving the answer maharaj himself said sanga patel you are become very hungry so please come and eat first then after eating we will continue our talk so in this way maharaj fed him not only that but uh, sanga patel asked maharaj why are not my wife coming here and instead of my wife you are coming to give me this food then maharaj asked uh, you need food or you need any other things then sanga patel explained if my wife come here with the food then after eating she can help me in uh, plowing 
as well as sowing these seeds in the farm in this way she can help me so maharaj said doesn't matter i myself help you tell me what kind of work i have to do and sangha patel so that different different things uh, different different works like um, first he saw maharaj how to sow the seed in into the soil and also the, uh, he required some more water from the well so at the time there is no like electricity no sub uh, submersible pumps and nothing so at the time the farmers use bullocks and uh because of that uh not the professional but at the time the local mechanics mechanisms uh and because of that they made such kind of technique that uh bullocks they come and go near the well and uh they have the bucket inside the well and they tied with the bullock so that when the bullock came near the well the bucket go inside the water and when the bullocks go far from the well at the time bucket filled with the water came out in this way they have the technique to fetch water from the well for the farm so at the time sangha patel also instructed maharaj to do that work so maharaj also did that work also maharaj helped him to sowing the seeds in soil in this way maharaj helped sangha patel different different things and while doing this work maharaj also talk with him with different different topics not any religious topic and in this way sangha patel become pleased with maharaj that uh, this swaminar is very good in work he had no any kind of laziness and he was very uh, like uh, eager to do work so he is very helpful to me then finally he asked why my wife not coming here and instead of my wife you come to give me this food then maharaj replied that sangha patel actually what happened when i come i become very hungry and uh, in at the outskirts of the village hit by met me so i asked some food so she requested me to come at home and when i went to the home then she said i made some food for you and ask that uh, you might be hungry in the farm so let me give this food to you so in this way i come here so sangha patel become surprised that maharaj you are hungry and i am uh, i i was not asking you like are you hungry or not you take some food with me or not and i even instructed to you do some work in the farm so at that uh on the day sangha patel instructed all the workers like uh they were free early that day and uh sangha patel himself spread a uh, cloth on his cart bullock cart and he himself uh requested maharaj please sit on this bullock cart and let we go to the village so that you have to uh, your food may be ready at home and it's too late so let we go to home so in this way sangha patel himself drove the cart and maharaj was sitting in cart when hitba at home look this scene that sangha patel was uh, driving the cart bullock cart and maharaj was sitting in a cart so hitba got the whole situation that now sangha patel understood the glory and greatness of maharaj and he might become a satsangi finally sangha patel prostrated before maharaj and he asked for forgiveness maharaj please forgive me because i didn't ask you for food and instead of giving food or instead of asking you for taking food i instructed you to do some work in farm so please forgive me and maharaj in this way make sangha patel a duty and finally hit bas question or hit bas problem also all the problems was solved in this way so in this way maharaj is all doer and maharaj is compensated enough to listen our prayers so any kind of problems happen to our life whether it is spiritually or whether it is it is physically or whether 
whether it is social any kind of problem if happen to our life we have to pray to our maharaj maharaj is so competent to solve our problems and questions and uh, he'll be well he'll be helpful to us in each and every aspect of our life so this is what the story of hitba so in this way we should also pray to maharaj in each and every mode of our life by saying this जय स्वामीनारायण श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय श्री पतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर्मात्मज वासुदेव हरि माधव केशव कामदम कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज